Hi, uh, welcome to the latest episode from the Rock to the Cloud season two. Um, obviously, we've had quite a lot of exciting stuff happening, and um, we're here to talk to you about all things uh, Rock, Cloud, Rock to the Cloud, uh, Server, Windows Server, Windows Server 2022, Azure, all of that other lovely good stuff, HCI, all sorts of you know stuff that we want to talk to you about, demystify some of that stuff for you, um, and also not just talk to me, but talk to an expert. So uh, this time we've managed to to wrangle um, the, the well uh, Microsoft's unicorn of Azure. Um, so uh, so uh, Sarah Lean, Sarah, how are you today? How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks, Thomas. How are you doing? I'm all right. That's look, that's why I've got a unicorn on my uh, on my on my little picture box there, <laughs> um, especially for you. Um, so um, Sarah, just um, just let's remind everybody um, what. Why are we talking? Why are we talking to Sarah? Why, why, is, why is Sarah a good person to talk to about all of this stuff? Um, so I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I'm in that IT pro camp. So, like you say, I'm a bit of a unicorn because I look after on-prem systems, look after infrastructure, and also look after the cloud um, types of things. So um, I have a passion for Windows Server and all those kind of good stuff that the IT pros and operations team look after. So yeah, I'm quite excited to talk to you today about Windows Server 2022. Brilliant. Well, uh, um, I, I'm glad that you are passionate about all those things, because today we're going to talk about, um, well, it's, maybe it's quite, is it a small thing? Is it a big thing? I don't know. We've just launched a new OS, um, Windows Server 2022. And um, we're going to talk about what's new in Windows Server 2022. So. Um, I think it's pretty exciting. Um, for me, it's exciting anyway, and I think um, it's always good to talk to somebody who is passionate about it like yourself. So um, how about we jump into today's topic? Yep, sounds good. <laughs> always good when, when, when the person you're talking to says, yes, that's good. Um, so <laughs> obviously, Windows Server 2022, one of the biggest things that's changed is it's you know, this whole talk of hybrid being enabled for cloud solutions, um, integrating, you know, Azure Arc and, you know, all, all the all the policies and all the monitoring and all that kind of stuff that's happened. And so, you know, Microsoft are calling Windows 2022 their first true hybrid OS. But can you tell us a little bit more about the features and benefits of, of why they're able to make such a bold statement? Yeah, so hybrid is, is very much um, at the forefront of what our customers are trying to do. I think lots of customers want to take advantage of that on-prem environment they, they already have, the investments, the skills that they have, but they're starting to leverage some of the cloud functionality as well, the scalability. So what we're seeing is people putting resources in both locations um, and some of the issues that they're having with that is being able to consistently manage it, um, Thomas. So they don't want to be using one monitoring tool for their on-prem environment. They don't want to have another one for their cloud environment. So when we start to look at some of what they can do with Windows Server 2022 and then adding on the Azure Art Agent means that you can extend some of those Azure capabilities that you might want to use or are already using um, to your servers that are living um, on-prem so that you can use um, Azure as that kind of management plane. And as you said, um, installing the Azure Arc agent onto your Windows servers machines allows you to use Azure monitoring, use um, Azure security, using like update management to patch your servers. There's all sorts of goodness that can be extended from the cloud back into your on-prem environment. So yeah, and I think you know the, the focus of where they're going with Windows Server is very much that hybrid capability. That's where customers are focusing their environments on. So that's where the, the Windows Server team are focusing on so I think that's why they're they're being very very bold about their claims there. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean they're making lots of lots of lots of um, claims and bold um, bold statements. Um, one of them, one of the things that um, I suppose a buzzword that's kind of on everybody's lips is security. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I think I saw there's this this new thing called is it is it core secure core technology um, that has been added to Server 2020. So what have Microsoft done there to change the sort of the technology landscape for security? Yeah, I think security is something that everybody is thinking about. It's a constant um, worry for a lot of people in their environment, whether they're secure, whether ports are open, all that kind of thing. And if, if someone gets attacked, it can be very costly for an organization to have to deal with that, um, especially if we get into the data loss and you know data leaking type scenario. So 
With the security in Windows Server 2022, we have something called firmware protection or that secured core server that you, you were talking about. And that mm. protects against the firmware attacks that we're seeing with a lot of customers. Um, so when you look at like Windows Admin Center, which we talked about before, Thomas, on the show, um, you can actually start to implement it and see if you have all of those security features for your firmware um, turned on um, and that's that's something that we've maybe not had in the past I, I know certainly you know when I was looking after servers for a lot of production environments we never really thought about firmware attacks but it's becoming more um, something that you do have to think about so it's nice to see something like that being built into the operating system being thought about and and, mm. and giving you know your IT pros less sleepless nights because they know that the something is being um, done around trying to protect them against those types of threats. Okay, and um, I know um, they're not a boy band, but TLS, right? <laughs> what, 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 is, what is TLS? Sounds like JLS, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so TLS is your transport layer security protocol, um, yeah. and that's around um, ensuring privacy and security with your traffic over the internet. And with server right. 2022, um, you've got support for TLS 1.3. 1.3 mm. drops a lot of support for the older crypto algorithms, cryptographic algorithms. That's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> which, because <laughs> we're seeing a lot of attacks again from those old older algorithms. So we've dropped support okay. for that. But equally with 1.3, you're seeing a lot less handshakes for your HTTPS traffic, which means that your end users are actually going to get a faster um, performance and a faster experience. So it's not only good from that security point of view, but it's also good from the endpoint okay. um, user as well. So yeah, TLS 1.3 is um, the kind of thing to think about. So so we've 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 added in Secure Core. So I suppose you need if you're using a server at the edge. Uh, you need to get yourself some new hardware, maybe with new Intel chips in it, you know, that kind of stuff, fine. But actually adding that in means that the OS is more secure from a firmware perspective. And then we've improved the, the TLS, uh, which is the transport layer security, which is those handshakes. I love that. Yeah. I love. I love the way that we we just take like right, like hand, it's a handshake. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, that, so, that, so the amount of handshakes has been reduced, which is good in COVID times, right? Because with COVID, obviously you want to be shaking both hands. So obviously sure. COVID friendly OS. Um, and then there was the last thing that I think I remember seeing on the launch was uh, for security was um, SMB. And when I say SMB, um, we're not talking about small medium business. We're talking about something else aren't we for server yeah so there's lots to cover around the smb because there's been a lot of talk around windows server 2022 there but in terms of security okay. the smb the server message block encryption is now supported yeah. at aes 256 gotta love okay. those acronyms so we've, we've made it more <laughs> secure um with yeah. the extra functionality there as well okay and so Right. Okay. So that SMB is 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 better encryption. It's more secure. But what exactly is the benefit of that to me? Right, I, it, with my new server. I think it's just that privacy. Um, again, you're you're upping the level of security because SMB is your file. A transfer type protocol that's how you access if you're an end user you know your network drives and you access your file yeah. shares and things like that thomas so um adding that extra level of security um, makes us all protected both from an end user point of view and obviously as an it pro as well um so yeah those kind of things might yeah. seem insignificant when you're looking through the technical specs of an operating system but they're good to be there it gives you that extra peace of mind cool um, does, and does it adds like better compression am i right in thinking when you're transferring things across networks as well so actually it kind of makes yes. the network more efficient is yeah that... so one of the other big features in this new operating system is smb compression um, and that's really just compressing the files that people are transferring across the network i think when we've okay. looked at customer feedback some of the larger files you know virtual machines that people have been cro um, copying across their network took a while um, and you know the, the, the down times you know the transfer times were coming down slowly as we all upgrade different components along our network but SMB compression can really make a difference I think I saw um, Ned Pyle actually do a demo of this where he was copying a 20 gig uh, VHD or a virtual machine file 
And without mm. compression, it took about two and a half minutes, three minutes to do that, which is not a lot of time, which is, is great. But when he turned on compression, he made that transfer in 28 seconds. So wow. that's a big difference that you can add that on. So again, maybe seem insignificant, you know, two or three minute transfer time isn't exactly, you know, the end of the world, but being able to reduce that to 28 seconds is just phenomenal. And again, makes everything just that bit easier and, and faster and nicer for everybody. Well, you know, we, we, we live in a world where time is money, right? And also data is uh, has a cost. So if yes. you can reduce the size of the data package and you can increase the speed that it, it moves, well, actually that's gonna save money ultimately and that, that will affect people's billing and, and mean that they can do more for their money. So that's, that's, that's gotta be good, right? Um, so yeah, like it's it, bold statements indeed, but it's definitely worth it. I'm gonna ask you about something else, another acronym mm -hmm. that um, again, maybe I, I, the thing is, is that I'm, I learn the acronyms and the explanation of the acronyms from people like yourself. But but quick, what it, like obviously you know people come on this show and they want to get off quick, get that. <laughs> but, um, but what does quick mean in terms of server twenty twenty two? So yeah, I actually don't know what the quick acronym stands for, but I can explain what it means. So I'll help no you one there. Does. Uh, <laughs> So SMB over quick, and I'm actually going to read this, Thomas, because there's a lot of acronyms, okay. a lot of technical information, and I want to make sure I get it right for the audience. So yeah. SMB yeah. over quick is a protocol that replaces TCP with a web orientated UDP mechanism. So unlike TCP, your quick is always encrypted and requires TLS 1.3 with certificate um, auth authentication for the tunnel that's happening. So what that really means in terms of like that's a lot of acronyms, a lot of, you know, tech speak. So what does that mean? Mm. What it actually allows you to do is with your remote users, you know, your hybrid users that are not in the office, none of us are in the office anymore, um, actually access files through um, your SMB over quick without a VPN um, tunnel have it happening. So you don't have to have your VPN connected because what we've seen is when you use the VPN, those traditional ports that you would use for SMB can sometimes be blocked, you know, that traditional port was port 445, which is blocked, you know, if you're sitting in an internet cafe in a hotel, that can often yeah. be tricky for you. SMB over quick is using port 443. So that's the UDP 443 port, which is a lot more open and you don't have to connect to a VPN to actually access your files. There's no change to the end user's experience. They'll just double click mm. on the file, access it, but in the back we'll be using UDP 443 instead of TCP 445. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of technical speak, but yeah, it's a, and it's improvement <laughs> for everybody. Um, being able to access their files and again from a security point of view as well it, it just seems to me like what we've done is we've done things at every layer of i suppose the server ecosystem to improve that security experience um so yes. you know that that's that's pretty exciting um now again you know i'm sort of thinking back to the launch a couple of weeks ago which was was brilliant i really i loved it yep. um i have to say that we spoke to rick yesterday so obviously i have to say that it, he, <laughs> i said he was the best part of it Shh, don't worry. <laughs> um just yeah, that, that that helps with his ego right um yep. the, <laughs> i'm joking um but there was a lot of talk on there about um containerization using containers um there was talk about some supporting tools around that so can you tell us a little bit more about what 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 that was angling at what was what was that kind yeah. of what was that about so like you say when we announced um the, the new server there was lots of talk about containerization and i know all the support around that the two bits of things that i picked out of that announcement that people might have missed is some of the tooling to help you support that containerization so Windows Admin Center has some capabilities um, to manage your containers. So you can actually start to even build your Docker files for you. So you don't have to sit there and open a blank notepad and start to script out your Docker file. You can use Windows Admin Center to build that up. So for me, that's fantastic. And then you can use that Docker file and deploy your containers either to AKS or AKS on Azure Stack HCI. So again, cool. it's just those nice integrations that you've got. And then one of my favorite tools as well, Azure Migrate has um, containerized um, ability. So we can look at the server that's running your workload, try to containerize the part of that, 
build that container and then you can deploy it to AKS, for example, as well. So there's lots of lovely little things that can help you get to that containerized point if that's where your organization is going to. You know, yeah. I I think at the Windows Summit, Jeff Woolsey had a lovely slide with tons of announcements around container support. And that's great for the organizations that are really mature and are on that journey already. But the tools I've just mentioned can help those organizations that are still, you know, trying to get on to that journey, trying to get on to using containers. So, yeah, those were those were my highlights. And, you know, again, I'm going to ask the stupid question, but what is the advantage of somebody using a container? Because, like, you've just told us they're great and it's a great journey to go on. But why, what, why do I want a container? Containers, I think, are great from that point of view if you're trying to get away from looking after servers. Um, containers are very much in that cattle versus pets type um, role, okay. um, and you don't have to fall in love with your server and to make some changes and stuff, and they can be very flexible and very okay. quick for some developer type opportunities. Um, so yeah, there's there's pros and cons against containers. If you're going down that journey, then there's lots of support for you. Um, it just depends if that's, it's gonna fit some organizations, Thomas, but it's not gonna fit everybody, to be honest, containers. So okay. it, it is, it's, it's one of those ones you have to weigh up depending on your workloads and what your objective is for your organization. But we have the choice now. So that's the main yes. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really what, what this is all about. So. Um, another thing that I saw um, is the the native Edge browser with a full desktop yes. experience. I, again, why is that cool? I think it's just cool because Edge has become a tool that lots of people love. Like I've got it on my desktop; it's my browser of choice. Probably not a surprise given I work for Microsoft, but it's also a lot of people's mm -hmm. browser of choice, maybe on their mobile phone and things like that as well. And when we had previous Windows servers, we had Internet Explorer. Now, I loved Internet Explorer back in the day, but it's a bit aged now and we definitely need newer technology. So having Edge built into Windows Server allows us to just take advantage of that. Now, obviously, there's a massive debate about whether you should have an Internet browser installed on your server at all, Thomas, but that's another topic of conversation. <laughs> well, it, it, it probably helps, though, I suppose, if you, something like Windows Admin Center, which runs in a browser, and um, that's exactly. pretty helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the, uh, see, look, I, I, I do you listen. Remember? I, am, I am remembering and I am learning. Um, so that, that's the good thing about the, these these videos. They're actually for me to learn. Yep. Um, so I'm going to do some fundamentals now next. That's my next That's my next job. Nice. Well, we might, well, we might talk about that later. Um, but there, there are several versions of Windows Server 2022. Um, and you know, maybe can you enlighten people about what the different versions are? Can you help me out with that? Yep. So we've still got um, standard edition and data center edition, but there's also an Azure edition. Now with the Azure edition, that's where you start to get to use some of the features we've talked about. So you use the hot patching or Azure auto manage feature that's built into the Azure edition. Equally, Azure Extended Network and the SMB over Quick is only available on the Azure Edition. So you don't get those three features on Standard or Data Center. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Although these features are amazing, you have to be using them inside a Azure Virtual Machine to actually make advantage of them or take advantage okay. of them. So that's really where I suppose the HCI piece comes in um for, for you know maybe if, if, if you want to go down that route then that's where you would use the azure edition of uh windows 2022 and then you can use those super super new features um yeah. and you can get away with that perfect okay so um what has driven the i suppose the ch all these changes where where are they coming from do you know what I mean? because microsoft's put in a lot of effort to me yeah. it seems like a lot of effort a lot of new features why are we why are we doing what you know what why do we keep on doing this stuff it's, it's customer feedback. I think we've seen Azure grow and go in directions because of customer feedback and the Windows Server team are now following that model. They're very much listening to customers, are very much listening to their security concerns. You know, when we think back to, you know, the firmware protection, that's a big ask for customers. How can you help us with those attacks? There you go, you've got that feature, SMB compression, SMB over quick. All of these things are based on customer feedback and customer pain points. Um, so don't think that your feedback is not being listened to because here's a great example of the team actually listening to you and building that into the Windows Server operating system now. Well, it's good to know that somebody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, so look, uh, you, you know, I think we're going to probably move to the the memes quite soon. But um, before we do, I, you know, one of the things I saw alongside the Server Twenty Twenty Two launch, I saw that there were a whole new like range of uh, of exams and certifications, yes. like a whole new, new raft of stuff. Um, is is can you maybe fill us in a little bit on on, mm -hmm. on where people can go, what they can go and do to learn a bit more about Server? Yeah, so this is very exciting because we haven't had Windows Server exams for quite a while and it's definitely again been another customer ask. So we're going to have two new exams which will feed into the Azure Server Hybrid Administrator Associate Certification. I think that's how you say it. So you're going to end up with <laughs> AZ800 and AZ801 um, um, and those two exams will make into that certification. Now they're not quite out yet, they're going to be in beta um, round about the end of the year and hopefully go live um, in 2022. But it's really exciting to see not only an exam that covers Windows Server, but that hybrid technology, that hybrid technology that a lot of organizations are using. So yeah. you're going to have to be a Windows Server expert and you're also going to have to know parts of Azure, things like Windows Admin Center, Azure Arc. The things we've been talking about are going to be featured inside these two exams. So um, my colleague Oren Thomas has created great study guides that you can go and use right now, start to study, yeah. um, so that when the beta comes out, you can actually go and, um, you know, set those exams and hopefully pass with flying colours. But yeah, definitely on my radar, and it's a very exciting announcement for us. Cool. I, um, well, you know what? I think this series, Rock to the Cloud, is, is going to help me with taking those exams. So, but Sarah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all your, your help, advice, and wisdom. Um, so look, uh, we're moving to that part of the show, um, which is the meme review, the, the bit where I get embarrassed and um, generally speaking, my my guests are able to have a little laugh um, at, at the meme at my expense. So, um, right, here we go. You ready? Are you ready, Sarah? I'm getting comfortable. Yes. I'm getting in, <laughs> getting in the zone for this. Uh, right, okay, so meme, meme one, please, producers. <laughs> That that is surely the end goal for any server administrator, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I've been in some messy server rooms, but never you made the cables into a hammock. I'll need to try that next time. <laughs> well, I, I've got a hammock, and I know how good it is. But I kind of would actually prefer a server room hammock. That is um, that's just brilliant. I mean, oh, yep. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Do you think they? Um, do you think they've got one of those somewhere in one of our Microsoft data centers? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> I don't Maybe think they would ever admit it. I know, too noisy though. I think to get a good night's sleep, though, would it not be? <laughs> I suppose, but you've got that monotonous kind of like zoning out sound. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's quite. It's. I mean, it might be a bit noisy, but it's kind of got like a background that oh, could be nice yeah. it could be nice to sleep in a server room. i'm sure some people have slept <laughs> in a server room before um if you have don't own up to it <laughs> cool yeah. um right okay well let's do let's do meme number two are you ready i'm not sure if a virtualized environment or if it's a or if it's cloud infrastructure <laughs> yeah Okay. Yeah, well, and there's a nice argument there, I think. <laughs> so, so, so explain that to me. I'm not sure if we're in a virtualized environment or a cloud infrastructure. To me, this is a reference to the Matrix. Oh, is it? I don't. I haven't seen the Matrix. <laughs> no, I don't know. I I have no idea. I have no idea. So, what, what, what would you, I think? What would you say? Cloud, infra cloud infrastructures just virtualized appliances, anyway, isn't it? Someone else's hardware, and then you're using the virtualization on top of that. So, I think yeah. they're just on words because we've also got virtualization on prem as well maybe something like that it's one of those inception ones i think you know yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's it's the idea of fry within uh, fry within fry uh yes. yeah yeah <laughs> it's far too clever for me and like i said this is where i look stupid so um perfect i didn't yeah like that one was over my head uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! No, I did say I look stupid. So look, um, we, we, let's let's just do let's just do a quick quick summary of what uh, uh, you know what what we learned today. Then I suppose new server OS. It's the most hybridized version ever. It's got all new layers of security, um, and it's basically good to go with lots of new exciting features uh, for people to get involved in Windows Server and. 
you told us about some cool new certifications that are coming from Microsoft. I yeah. think, yeah, is there anything else that you would summarize about Windows Server 2022 that, that you were excited about but you, never, you didn't get to say? Or did we cover it all? Actually, I think one of the good features I've, I noticed people mentioning on Twitter was they were able to do great in-place upgrades. So previously, you would be really frightened of doing an in-place upgrade, um, you know, reinstalling the operating system on top of your server because it might not yeah. have worked previous versions. But that is something the team have actually worked on. So it's really good to go to do an in-place upgrade um, now from some of the newer ones. I saw lots of people doing upgrades from Server 2019 to 2022 as an in-place upgrade, and it just worked, which is what we want, right? Um, yeah. So I think that's that's something to be bear in mind if folk are looking to adopt Windows Server 2022. You can take advantage of the in-place upgrade because the team have worked on that as well. Cool. See that? There's always a little bit more that I could learn. <laughs> so, look, Sarah, thank you so much for coming today on uh, to the rock to, uh, from the rock to the cloud. Um, everybody at home, look, um, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this episode. Uh, obviously, we're very lucky to have Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, keep your eye out on Channel Nine, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube for the next episode. And remember, if you've got any thoughts or comments, drop us a line. Um, and yeah, we'd love to hear what you think. And if you've got a subject you want to talk about, let us know. We'll make sure that we get the right person from the amazing uh, you know, resources out there, the, the Sarahs of this world, to come and talk to us uh, about any exciting subjects that you might want to know about server. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.